New members and lower medical costs helped WellPoint beat analyst expectations. The insurer raised its outlook for this year, but declined to give a forecast for next year, citing problems launching those new insurance plans under the president's health care law. WellPoint, one of the biggest insurers offering plans on the state-based exchanges. Shares of the company fell more than 3% to $85.48. WellPoint CEO was just one of many insurance chief executives who met with senior administration officials today at the White House. Also at that meeting, embattled Health and Human Services Secretary Kathleen Sebelius. They were there to discuss the botched rollout of the healthcare.gov website and implementation of other provisions of the Affordable Care Act. Also in Washington today, some new rules on crowdfunding. This is a popular way entrepreneurs raise small amounts of money from many investors. Many startup firms rely on this technique to sell small stakes in their companies to investors. And now, federal regulators are trying to open the door to the everyday investor to help finance new companies. Eamon Javers joins us now from Washington with a look at the new rules the government is proposing. Over to you, Eamon. Hey, thanks very much. Well, crowdfunding's got a lot of potential here for new entrepreneurial companies to raise money by going out on the Internet and getting thousands of new investors to contribute money to the startup's cause. That saves them the trouble of going to the big banks and venture capital firms that they've traditionally gone to. But now the SEC says it's a little bit worried here about this new proposal uh, in terms of fraudsters and scam artists that might take advantage of unsuspecting investors. So they say these new rules are going to underlie the overall effort here and protect investors. So there's a couple of key caveats that they put in place. They said no company will be able to raise more than a million dollars in crowdfunding in a given year. They also said that investors themselves will be limited in two key categories based on their income. They said uh, that they'll be limited to investing just $2,000 or 5% of their annual income or net worth if they make or own under $100,000 a year. Over that, they'll be allowed to invest 10% of their annual income or net worth uh, if uh, whichever is greater. So a couple of key caveats there for the companies themselves and for the investors. The SEC saying it's a little wary here of fraud and abuse that might take place, but they want to open this up to get as many people to have an opportunity to buy legitimate companies as they can. A lot of people, Eamon, are very excited about this, uh, and it's a potential. A lot of people, as you point out, worried that this is sort of send me your money over the Internet, and I'll put it, I promise to put it to work in a good way. How right. long before these rules will actually go into place and these mechanisms will start operating? Well, they say today that these are uh, temporary proposed rules. They've got a whole uh, process for actually implementing them. They say that could take up to 90 days, and a lot of the experts say uh, it could be well into next year before we actually see companies raising money on the Internet this way. Yeah, and talking about mechanisms, uh, I understand that the SEC is talking about a new kind of financial entity here. It calls it a funding portal. What is it? How does it work? Well, that's the new creature in all of this. The funding portals would be websites that start up as sort of aggregators, places where companies can go to post their need and say, hey, here, I've got a cool idea. Send me some money. Here are the details. Those entities are going to be subject to new regulation as well under this. All right, Eamon, uh, thank you very much. Eamon Javers reporting you from bet. Washington.